Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to take a look at this little device which is a, a RF signal source or signal generator if you like that I've got from uh, from China it's um, it's a module built around a, a PLL synthesizer chip and a microcontroller and also has a, an OLED display and some uh, push buttons to allow you to control it and I paid about 27 um, pounds UK uh, for that which is about 30 something dollars depending on the exchange rate and uh, for what you get for the money I think that's um, that's pretty good indeed so let's um, let's have a closer look um, on the bench okay well here's the um, device a little bit uh, of a closer view for you and um, I'll go into the details of how the circuits put together from what I can um, discern in a moment or two but essentially you've got power supply you've got processor and a, a display some buttons and you've got the actual um, RF uh, signal source over on this side um, power supply wise um, there's a barrel jack here for supply um, and I've not actually made much use of that because there's also a USB 3 socket here which is actually a, for me a much easier way to um, provide power for the unit. So plugging in USB uh, results in a couple of LEDs lighting up and the screen which probably isn't terribly easy to see on this um, on this photo. Uh, there's the screen and we can navigate our way around this using the push buttons and there are several menus. Point is actually the um, signal um, the actual frequency of the signal and to return from that it's not immediately obvious but I've discovered that a long press on the centre button returns you back to the top level menu. Sweep here sets up um, the the range of a sweep frequency uh, and it'll um, sweep quite comprehensively should you need it to. Um, here this is the step of frequency which um, the sweep uses uh, and there's also a menu here, menu 4 is for, for time for the sweep and finally um, at the bottom is a menu that says DB set and at power up that all, that's always set at plus 5 DB uh, the settings available there if you step down are plus 2, minus 1, minus 4 and then you're back to plus 5 it rolls around again and those steps are, are actually a function of the um, the PLL synthesizer chip that, that's being used. So what I'm going to do now is get this um, connected up to a few instruments and uh, we'll see um, we'll see what she does. I think one thing to say before I do that of course is this incredible frequency range that's available here. It runs from about 35 megahertz to well over 4 gigahertz. Now I don't have um, anything to measure above about 2.1 gigahertz but certainly this is potentially a, a microwave a signal source as well um, for a very reasonable price. Right let's get it connected up and have a look um, at some of the outputs. Okay here I've got the board uh, set up powered by USB and I've got it connected to the input of my uh, Siglent signal generator which also has a, a frequency counter function and appreciate it's not terribly easy to see those uh, numbers so I'll just zoom in for you okay here's a close-up of the display and I've got the uh, signal generator set to 150 megahertz this counter is good up to about 250 megahertz so I've tried to pick something that's sort of mid-range-ish uh, so 150 megahertz and as you can see uh, the results I'm getting there uh, 149.99954 um, is pretty close. Now I have to bear in mind here that um, of course the reference um, frequency for this uh, signal generator of course is generated internally and whilst this instrument is relatively new and still has a calibration certificate um, obviously the accuracy of the measurement is dependent on the internal oscillator in here. Um, and what is interesting to note is that after after 80 measurements here the standard deviation of the measurements is um, is under 10 Hertz um, and 
you would expect that uh, any measurement you were likely to make would fall within um, six times the standard deviation plus or minus three times the standard deviation um, which is clearly, clearly less than um, than about 60 hertz there um, and that would be 99 point something percent of the measurements you'd expect and bearing in mind we're doing 150 million hertz it's pretty close if you want to do the maths it's about 0.002 percent out something like that so um pretty damn close i would say now i'm going to now move on to the oscilloscope so we can have a look at the output of the waveforms and uh, the oscilloscope bandwidth is up to about um well the published one is 100 uh, megahertz uh, it will go higher than that so we'll have a look at the waveforms now in the time domain okay so i've got the signal generator hooked up to the scope now i've got it directly connected to channel ch channel one and i'm just touching the board there which is why it's jumping about a bit that's um probably be do better if it was in some kind of case so currently set at 80 megahertz remember the bandwidth of the scope is 100 megs so just come down a little bit there and stepping up in 10 megahertz steps there you can see the the frequency um, changing so we're at um, 80 megahertz and i've also got there are, there are two outputs on the generator um, it's called out a plus and out a minus and i'll show you how that's wired up um, uh, in a moment or two when we have a look in detail at the circuit board so I've got the other output attached to channel B and what we get there is uh, we get obviously a similar um, sine wave of the same amplitude and frequency uh, but it is uh, offset um, from a phase point of view and according to the scope measurements it's about 130 degrees on average the difference in phase between the two signals um, and I don't know of a way to to change that um, I just guess it's the two two outputs from the, the synthesizer chip okay we now need to move on to the spectrum analyzer to look at the uh, frequency above uh, 100 uh, megahertz on account of the fact that my scope's bandwidth is um, pretty much at its limit there uh, the analyzer goes up to 2.1 gigs so let's now have a look at the uh, signal outputs in the frequency domain okay I've got the uh, generator attached to the spectrum analyzer but currently not powered on um, so we've got um, the full sweep of the spectrum analyzer here which is from uh, 0 to 2.1 gigahertz and I've got the uh, signal generator set on uh, 100 megahertz so if I power that up um, you can see straight away there's the fundamental and there are plenty of harmonics available that, sp that stretch certainly uh, up to where the limit of my measurement at 2.1 gigs and presumably they continue on to uh, towards the, the 4 gig limit interestingly it's the uh, odd harmonics that uh, stand out the um, these harmonics here and um, much better suppressed so if you're going to use a microwave source um, or any kind of signal source um, from a transmitted point of view you're going to need to follow it uh, with some kind of low pass filtering of course that's that's good practice anyway so let's now have a look at that fundamental signal in a little bit more detail okay here's the spectrum analyzer now centered on um, 100 megahertz with a, a 1 megahertz span so you can see we've got um, a relatively small amount of, of phase noise really um, that's pretty reasonable and currently I've got this uh, set to plus 5 dB on the uh, output setting that I mentioned earlier and it's showing up here as about minus 0.4 uh, dBm if I now drop that down to plus 2 db so it's dropped by 3 db on the board we can see we've gone down to minus 3.6 dbm so it is actually um, the db relative db change on the um, oled display uh, does match uh, reality uh, so i would expect if i now drop down to minus one to be at about yeah six and a half so that's don't know how well that 
you can see that but uh, that's now about minus 6.6 .6 dBm at minus 4 we're getting about minus 9.5 dBm and finally back to the plus 5 and we're back up to minus 0.4 dBm so that, that dB setting is actually um, quite reasonable okay I'm going to move up now to 1 gigahertz and uh, just uh, have in mind there that we're about um, minus 0.4 or, well minus 0.5 dBm at uh, 100 megahertz let's see what it's like at uh, 1 gig okay here we are now centered on uh, 1 gigahertz and again phase noise looks pretty reasonable got the same setting still a 1 megahertz um, uh, span across the screen here I'm at plus 5 dB and it's now saying about minus 3 dBm just slightly above minus 3 dBm so if I drop down to the plus 2 dB we go to, to minus 6 so the dB settings that's now minus 1 yep yeah, minus 9 the um, those 3 dB settings still apply at, uh, at 1 gig uh, let's just now hop up to 2 gig and here we are now at uh, 2 gigahertz so we're pretty much at the limit of, of what I can measure um, and the analyzers saying that at the plus 5 dB setting we're getting about minus 0.7 dBm so I'd expect it to be around the 10 if I drop that down yep minus about 10.3 and again drop down another 313 yeah so again those those dB settings are indeed um, uh, uh, changing relatively by the the 3 dB amount that it's um, showing on the display uh, I can't um, go any higher than that uh, let's now have a look at um, what the spectrum analyzer makes of the harmonics Okay, I've returned the signal generator to 100 megahertz and I've got it attached to the spectrum analyzer using the full spread up to 2.1 gig on the right hand side and you can see um, certainly plenty of harmonics there. Let's now um, uh, measure that. So we'll ask the analyzer to tell me what the harmonics are. Um, so fundamental there, um, is at minus 0.41 dBm which fits in with the uh, measurements we made earlier uh, the rest of the measurements are uh, dBc so they're relative to the, the fundamental so secondary harmonics at 48 minus 48 dBc third harmonic at minus 9 so th those um, odd harmonics are uh, quite punchy signals um, fourth harmonics at minus 83 fifth at uh, minus 90 so they are dropping away but yeah those odd harmonics uh, are quite strong so if you're going to use that as a signal source it clearly needs some some reasonably good uh, low pass filtering in the output stages last thing i want to look at on the spectrum analyzer is some kind of measurement of um, the phase noise um marker one keeps drifting off the peak don't worry about that but what i essentially got here on marker two is I'm about uh, 10 kilohertz from the carrier which I've got at about 1 gigahertz and I'm getting a phase noise measurement there it's bouncing up and down so if we just take the average of 100 measurements we get a, an easier to read number and we're getting about minus 98 dBm per hertz if I go to max hold which is absolutely worst case which you might argue is um, is better because it, it's this is the worst it's going to get i'm getting about minus 90 uh, db per hertz um but in reality it, it's bouncing about there so that's certainly um above the spectrum analyzers phase noise uh, specification so um but as you can see with a, a resolution bandwidth here of 100 hertz it's um it's actually uh, looking um a pretty good uh, pretty good signal Okay, having spent a bit of time playing around on the bench, let's have a look at um, the circuit board in detail. And remember, this is 35 megahertz to 4.4 gigahertz um, as a, an RF source, um, which is pretty impressive, really, for the price. So what we've got, top um, left-hand side, we've got the um, power supply, input circuitry, a barrel jack, and also um, the USB-C, uh, I believe I called it, uh, USB 3 earlier, I meant to say USB-C. Uh, the chip there is a voltage regulator and I believe S6 is a, a reset um, switch but I'm not, uh, not really had to make much use of that. 
Below that we've got the processor with its clock generator and display. To the right we've got the, the four switches which allow you to um, to make inputs to the to the processor to control the thing and then the top right of course is the the guts of the instrument which is the uh, um, the 4351 uh, uh, PLL chip. The processor it's a 32-bit ARM Cortex and I believe that one's got 64k of uh, flash memory on it. The Y1, the clock chip below, is um, 8 MHz, that's the clock um, for the processor. The heart of the unit is the ADF4351 there, which is the um, PLL synthesizer chip, and the socket that you can see in the centre of the board marked JP4, I actually think that's uh, if you want to use it with an external um, signal reference, and I believe the jumper above that socket allows you to do that. Above there we've got another uh, oscillator which is 100 megahertz and that of course is the component which is going to give you the um, the stability. Um, so I probably if you're a bit fussy you could probably rig up some kind of trimmer to pull that a little bit if you were concerned about the accuracy. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> Uh, looking in real close-up detail then at the at the heart of the uh, instrument which is the the 4351 circuitry uh, you can see there there's the pinout of the of the chip and according to the data sheet there are two outputs there's RF out A plus and RF out A minus and they're connected there with those uh, those two transistors those two NPN transistors that you can see that's obviously all built into the chip and it's suggesting the circuitry, uh, th those are the, the, the pinouts on the chip, and the data sheet suggests the circuitry um, beyond the chip should be a 50 ohm resistor up to VCO uh, and then 100 puff capacitor and uh, then you've got a 50 ohm output. And if you look there, R12 is indeed 50 ohms and the trace then goes up to the VVCO pin so we've certainly got that circuitry and I've measured C40 and C41 and they are indeed um, 1 nanofarad capacitors as, uh, as suggested there and then those the trace from C40 on the right hand side goes straight up to the output of um, socket A minus and likewise for uh, C41 goes to uh, socket A plus so it is wired exactly like that so there's the board uh, in a little bit more detail OK, well that's about it for our look at the 4351 uh, RF signal source, or signal generator, call it what you want. Um, 27 UK pounds, bought in uh, uh, the end of August. I think for what you get there, that's actually um, that's actually a pretty good bit of kit. Um, certainly going to come in handy for me when I want a, a RF signal that's a little bit higher than my signal generators will produce. So, hope you've enjoyed the video and it's made some sense if you've got one of these or thinking of getting one um, uh, put comments below um, you know I'm not an expert on these things I'm learning as I go um, but to learn quite a lot about uh, how to get a sensible reading for phase noise so it's been a, a good learning experience for me hope that's been the same for you thanks very much for watching if you've liked it please click thumbs up if you've not subscribed it would be great if you could subscribe that would really help me thanks very much and we'll see you on the next video